It's the pedal with the longest production run in history and it's one of the biggest selling pedals of all time. It has been on the pedal board of guitar players like Steve Vai, Kurt Cobain, Joe Satriani, John Frusciante, Mike Stern and Prince, just to name a few. Hey, what's up? Roberto here. In today's video, we are going to take a look at the pedal that we can say for sure everybody has seen, tried or currently uses. I'm talking about the iconic Orange Boss DS1. If you are interested in knowing how Boss Corporation started making pedals, you can click this link up here to our previous video. The DS1 was the first distortion pedal made by Boss Corporation. It has been in production since 1978 and is one of the most recognizable pedals made by the company. The earliest DS1 were made in Japan and Taiwan and since 2017 they have been produced in Malaysia. Over the years the pedal circuit has remained pretty much the same, but the core component of the pedal, the preamplifier, was later replaced with an op amp chip and it changed several times. Around 2016 the pedal's production moved from through hole technology where the circuit components have to pass through the circuit board's holes and then be soldered to the modern surface mount technology with much smaller circuit components applied to a solid surface. Interestingly, due to the popularity of the DS1 pedal over time, Boss decided to produce a black limited edition in 2017 for the 40th anniversary of the pedal and to pay tribute to the earlier models, it was made with the through hole technology. If you are wondering if this means that the old technology is better, check out the JHS video linked in the description box below. The DS1's unique character is thanks to the way the circuit is engineered. The main characteristic of the circuit is given by the high boost the signal receives before entering the part of the circuit where the signal is amplified and distorted. Let's take a look at the pedal now. As I said before, we have three main settings, tone, distortion and level. Ok, let's start from the tone knob. When you turn it clockwise, it increases the highs and decreases the lows. When you turn it counterclockwise, it increases the lows and decreases the highs. It's fundamental to find the right position of the knob according to the guitar and the pickups you are using. Because if you set the tone too high, you will obtain a fizzy small sound. If you set the tone too low, the risk is that the sound disappears from the mix or from the band. But it really depends on your pickups. For instance, if you have a guitar with single coil pickups, you could set this level lower than if you have a guitar with humbuckers, just to give you some reference. The distortion knob sets the amount of distortion, of course. As you can hear, even set at minimum, the sound is not 100% clean. You can turn the knob clockwise to increase the distortion.
from around uh, just say three o'clock position to the maximum position the level of distortion doesn't change a lot but the sound could be a little bit uh, compressed the level knob sets of course the volume of the pedal How do the pedals sound? Instead of the usual sound test, I want to compare three generations of the pedal, and I'm so excited. One from the 80s with the Toshiba preamp, one from the 90s again with the Toshiba preamp, and the 2022 model which uses the JRC op amp.
The pedals sounded similar. You can consistently feel the character of the pedal, but nevertheless there are differences, of course. Speaking honestly, it's impossible that two pedals of the same model sound 100% identical under any circumstances. This is due to the tolerance of electrical components, which means that similar components may react slightly differently in the circuit. The 80s version has a more warm, creamy and layered distortion sound compared to the other two, even if both the 80s and the 90s version have the same preamp. It's pretty crazy, huh? I love the peak attack and the nuanced flavor. The 90s version has a slightly less layered nuanced effect and a sound that is slightly less refined while still producing a gratifying distortion. The 2022 version seems to have a little bit tighter and fizzier sound, but the DS1 imprint is still very present, and the pedal is louder than the others. Whatever the version is, in my opinion the pedal gives its best on an already saturated amp. You really need to play with the gain, the gain knob on your clean channel, and with the distortion knob on the pedal until you find the right acme. The pedal could be used also in the high gain channel of your amplifier to boost a solo and add more spice to the sound. Or you can even obtain a fast distortion using a boost pedal or a compressor set as a boost in front of your DS1, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> The pedal is also one of the most modified pedals in history. Various companies like JHS, Keeley, Wampler and others have designed and sold their modified DS1. Even I modified my 80s DS1 years ago and just recently brought it back to the original version. It was my first attempt to modify a pedal and it was very successful. As you can see, there's a hole in the O of the tone sign because I remember I did the Keeley mod, the C9 mod and was really 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 cool. So thank you for watching, give me a thumbs up if you liked this video and let me know if you preferred one pedal over the other or if you have more stories about this pedal because we like stories, we like true experience. Last but not least, don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell for notifications of our new content. Write comments or questions and even suggestions for future content and help us keep the ball rolling. We really appreciate your interest and your support. See you next time. Ciao.